On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands inside. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. Hello and welcome to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. Happy Feast of the Pentecost. Really, really an important part. We think about it. And in a few weeks, we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the Trinity. God created. God created the male and female as image and likeness. God gave them a choice. They turned away from God. So God promised to send a savior. He sent his only son. We didn't exactly like what he had to tell us. So we killed him. Now, has God abandoned us because Jesus is dead? No. And we hear, and this is the evening of the first day of the week. Now, let me put it in context for you, okay? This is probably the Monday after the Friday. They had been there. They watched him. They saw what they did to him. And they saw how badly they beat him and eventually killed him. And they took him down off the cross. And they buried him. On that third day, they went to the tomb. And they found the wrappings lying on the ground and the stone rolled back. But him they didn't see. And some of the women said that they, he appeared to them. But tell my brothers to go to Galilee and they're, they're, there they will see me. So now we're the next evening. They had the door of the place where they were locked for fear of the Jews. They killed him. And everyone knew him. And everyone went to him. And everyone was cured and healed by him. And everybody knows we were his followers. If that's what they did to him, they're not going to be as nice to us. And so we're scared to death. Got the doors locked. Obviously, he comes and stands in their midst. That's their moment. That's their moment. They don't know what has happened. Well, they know what happened. They don't know how he got in the room. They don't know how he's alive again. They don't know how he's not bloody and bruised. They don't know that. But they know him. And they're excited. Now, this is the group that, as we read last week, on the Feast of the Ascension. Go therefore and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to carry out everything that I have commanded you. Okay. How? How do we do that? How do you go to all nations? You want to send me to some tribe in the Amazon and Ask me to catechize them? I don't know where they are. I don't know that language. 
I don't know how to talk to those people. I don't know what their customs are. And he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. Now, God is back in the world. For the Jesus who's been crucified, God breathes on them the Holy Spirit. And now God's work continues. It began with the Father. It was clarified with the Son. And it's made possible by the Holy Spirit. Think about it. In the last 2,000 years, and if you're a student of world history, you go, wow. A lot of things have happened in the last 2,000 years. We've had a lot of rulers. We've had a lot of dictators. We've had a lot of dynasties. We've had a lot of reigns. We've had a whole lot of stuff come and go. You know, but there's only one thing that exists today that existed in the time of our Lord. And that's the Roman Catholic Church. You realize that? You are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Whatever you declare bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you declare loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So the Lord has commissioned his church to continue by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah? Well, if the Holy Spirit has been in the church, how come we have all these different tragedies, scandals, Whatever you want to talk to. How come, if the Holy Spirit guides a church, then how come you had all those pervert priests and the church covered up for them? God promised that he'd be with us till the end of time. He didn't promise that everyone who would leave the church would be perfect. Bearing in mind that when our Lord says to Peter, you know, Peter, if, if, if you don't have, you know, uh, if I don't bathe you, wash your feet. Oh, then, Lord, please bathe me. Oh, Lord, I'll never deny you. And the Lord basically says, oh, shut up, Peter. You're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. So our Lord knew from day one that he was sent in the Holy Spirit to guide his church, but there would be imperfections. The church would never, ever be perfect, but he would be with us till the end of time, and he would guide us, and he would guard us. And I think that's very, very important to understand, because as I look at the history of the church, oh my gosh, I'm scandalized. I look at some of the things that I've read about this most recent abuse crisis. I want to barf. I can't believe that someone actually who said they were going to be a priest and said they were there to serve the people of God did some of the stuff that they did. I am absolutely sickened by it. Now, saying that, I am not saying, so you need to be like me because I'm perfect. God knows I'm far from it. But at least those were not my sins. I can't believe, I can't believe that some people did the things that they did. So where's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit guides the church. The Holy Spirit's part of the, the positive faith. The Holy Spirit guides a church to choose its leaders. The problem is our Lord sent the Holy Spirit among human beings. 
human beings like Peter who would deny him three times and yet and over the course of his life will continue to grow in his knowledge, his love, and his devotion. And bearing in mind that all of his disciples who received the Holy Spirit would one day become martyrs. They would all die for the faith. And as Pope John Paul oftentimes said, the blood of the martyrs waters the seeds of faith within the church. And certainly it's no different today than it's been in years past. But that challenge that our Lord breathes on them the Holy Spirit. Now, because you think about it, it's been 2,000 years ago. This is 12 people we're talking about. And 2,000 years later, it's worldwide, in every language, in every country. It's persecuted in a lot of places in the world. How does that happen, 12 people? You know, we've all seen the rise and fall of many ministries. To me, one of the telltale signs of a lot of these ministries is when they're named after themselves. The John Brown Ministries, okay? You know, the Harry Smith Ministries. The Mary Jones Ministries. It's a telltale sign. It's not my ministry. It's not my church. It's not me I'm serving. The money doesn't go to me. The ministry is not about me. The ministry is about the power of the Holy Spirit continue to work in the world through the church to call us to holiness and call us to renewal. And that's what he gave to the disciples the very first moment that those who are now left behind and sent to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and named to... Uh, called to do the work of Christ. This is what he left them with, the Holy Spirit. And if you remember, Thomas was not there. Oh, yeah, I, like I believe he was just here. And I put my hand inside, fingers into the nail marks. Then I'll believe. And so our Lord reappears. He says, Thomas, quit be unbelieving. Here, put your hands here, the nail marks there. Stop with your unbelief and be believing. And so that promise of the Holy Spirit was so very crucial, which now remains and guides and leads the church. But secondly, the first thing the Holy Spirit, he empowered them to do was to forgive sins. Wow. Important. Why? Because unless we can have our sins forgiven, if you have to wait till you're perfect to join the church, there is no church. It's filled with imperfect people like us. We'll talk about that, Holy Spirit, more on the Feast of Pentecost. Stay with us. We'll be right back. During this holy season, we would like to offer you a wonderful opportunity to grow spiritually with this CD, a contemporary meditation on the Stations of the Cross, produced by Aaron Neville and Father Jeff Bailly. All proceeds of the CD go to the fight against human trafficking and to Metanoia Manor. We thank you for considering this offer an opportunity. We hope and pray this journey with Christ on the way of the cross will enrich your lives as well as these children. Thank you. Oh, when they condemn, condemn my Lord. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, who sends you forgive or forgiven them, who sends you retain or retain. Hello and welcome back to Close Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. We're glad that you came back. And he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. If you pay attention to the readings for today's Mass, 
you will hear that upon the apostles that the tongues of fire descended upon them and enabled them to go forth and to communicate, to do what needed to be done. One of the things about the Holy Spirit, and, and I've used this term before, and I really mean it. You know, there are a lot of situations, and look, I studied 12 years in the seminary. I got my doctorate in psychology. I did all this studying. You can study all you want, but every day what walks in your office is a new day, okay? Every day what you get called into doing is a new day. And so realizing that, realizing that more often than not, we have to just say a prayer, say, okay, God, I'm going in, cover me. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never heard of this before. I've never had to deal with this. I've never known anyone who's done that or been in a situation like that. I can't tell you how many times over the course of the last 40 years. I'll but, Father, you don't remember me, but back in 1983, this happened, that happened. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I don't remember it. But you told me something I'll never forget. You told me, and I'm going, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know where it came from. I don't remember, I don't remember talking like that. I don't remember saying that. You know, one of the most difficult things that I do or have done is go to the home of someone whose child has just committed suicide. What do you tell them? How do you give them hope? How do you, how do, you do it? And you just go in. And you, God, give me the strength, give me the words, give me the wisdom, give me whatever it is. And it happens. And I don't know what happens. And I don't know always what I say. But I know that when you go in and you ask God to cover you, God is going to give you what you need, even at times to speak what you don't know how to say. And I'm talking about literally. I was a great devotee to Medjugorje. And starting in about 1983, I went regularly, at least twice a year, brought groups with me. I became friends with one of the, the visionaries by the name of Maria. And of course, Medjugorje is an international village now but because of the apparitions to the children. And this one young girl, and you gotta understand, I mean, this is podunk Yugoslavia. You know, this is not a place, I mean, they didn't have a red light when I started going there, okay? They don't have international schools. They don't have, I mean, you know, they got little farmhouse schools and stuff like that. And one of the visionaries I became friends with, who did speak some English, she was very fluent in Italian. And I talked to Maria and I said, Maria, where did you learn to speak Italian like that? She said, you know, we had so many Italian pilgrims coming here and none of us spoke Italian. And I asked the Blessed Mother to give me the gift of Italian. And she gave it to me for my birthday. And this young lady speaks Italian and I, you know, I speak real broken Italian like a caveman. But anyway, she was just absolutely incredible. Some of you may or may not know Sister Breeze McKenna. Sister Breeze McKenna for many years worked with Father Scallon, Father Kevin Scallon, who's now deceased. And they did priest retreats around the world. 
I worked with them in Ireland. I, I, I did retreats with them in Ireland and in England. And then I got a call and they were headed to the Diocese of Tegucigalpa in Honduras. And about a week before, Father Kevin's brother died in Ireland and they called me and asked me, could I help with the retreat in, in, our, in, in, in uh, Honduras? And I said, yeah, but I don't speak Spanish. I mean, I know my numbers and my colors and you know, I grew up with nuns from Spain and every day we had a little Spanish class. Hola, me llamo Jeff, you know, and hello, my name is, and you know, we knew our numbers, we knew our colors, but much past that, I didn't know how to speak Spanish. Oh, don't worry about it. We, you'll have an interpreter, and we'll, we'll, we'll give the retreat with the interpreter. Fine, no problem. So, you know, uh, get down and, and, and meet Sister Breeze in uh, Tegucigalpa at the retreat house, and is one of those things that I, you know, I, I pull up and they meet me at the car outside the, the conference hall and said, good, you're on in 15 minutes, you know, and so I meet the interpreter and I start giving a conference to the priest of the diocese at Tegucigalpa with the Spanish interpreter. And obviously what happened was some of the priests decided they wanted to come talk to me. They wanted to go to confession. They wanted to, to talk to me about their lives, their situations, their whatever. Well, you can't have an interpreter for confession. You can't have an interpreter for private counseling. And I said, okay. I sat there six hours. I sat there six hours with priests who spoke, a few of them had a couple English words. 90% of them spoke no English whatsoever. I sat there for six hours hearing confessions and counseling people in Spanish. They understood everything I said. I understood everything they said. Okay, God, I'm going in. Cover me. And if you ask me right now to make up a paragraph in Spanish and speak to you in Spanish, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can tell you, hola, me llamo Jeff, but other than that, I don't have a lot to tell you. Not in Spanish. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I spent six hours hearing uh, confessions in Spanish to priests in a diocese in Honduras. I'm not talking about whether or not, you know, my, my knowledge of Spanish is good, bad, or otherwise. What I'm talking about is so many times, and this is how the church has endured. This is what the Feast of the Pentecost meant. I'm going to give you what you need to preach the gospel. And like I said, if you ask me to go, you know, somewhere across the world and start to speak to these people who have a tribal language, I have no idea what I'm going to tell them because I have no idea. There's no dictionary. But you go in and the Holy Spirit provides. And I think that's the work of the church is trusting that the Holy Spirit will guide us, will provide for us. And I'm going to ask you very seriously, you know, and there was a great, there was a, 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 a great uh, cartoon. I forget the name of the cartoon, but it was, it was uh, a, a pastor of the church. And he, he had given his farewell sermon and, um, and he was leaving. And they're walking out, and uh, the, the lady said, oh, Pastor, so nice to see you. And, and this is, you know, uh, he says, Miss, Miss Thornapple, don't worry. He said, I promise you, your next pastor will be even better than I am. And she goes, hmm, that's what they told us the last time, okay? And I'm, I, I'm asking you, 
That is, we deal with the church and all the faults and all the failings and all the sins that we see in the church. Pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit is going to change me, change the hearts of the people that we deal with, change the inner working of the church, that God is going to renew the church like he did at Pentecost and send the Holy Spirit to renew us, to be aware of the things we need to be aware of, to invite people to the holiness we sometimes see lacking in the church. And like Mrs. Thornapple, hmm, they told us for the last one, well, you know, if, if, if you have a hard time, you know, in your parish situation, pray for your priest. Pray for that situation. If you find yourself in a parish where your priest is non-native, and English is not his first language, and you say stuff like, I can't understand a word he says, it does me no good to go to church. First of all, understand what the church is. The church is the sacraments. You still receive Jesus, body and blood, soul and divinity. It's not about my sermon. It's not about their sermon. I would do no better doing sermons in their native tongue than they do in English. But continue to pray for the church for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's going to purify us and sanctify us, especially after everything that we've been through recently. We need a renewal. We need the Holy Spirit to transform the hearts of all of us, not just those of us who are priests and nuns and religious, but all of us need our hearts renewed so that we can become more of what God intends us to be. We thank you for being with us. Have a blessed Pentecost season, and may God lead you closer in your walk every day. God bless you. During this holy season, we would like to offer you a wonderful opportunity to grow spiritually with this CD, a contemporary meditation on the Stations of the Cross, produced by Aaron Neville and Father Jeff Bai. All proceeds of the CD go to the fight against human trafficking and to Metanoria Manor. We thank you for considering this offer an opportunity. We hope and pray this journey with Christ on the way of the cross will enrich your lives as well as these children. Thank you. Oh, when they condemn, condemn my Lord.